So we are working on finite limits. In the last video, I tried to give you an idea of why we needed limits in the first place by using a real-life example. We wanted to know how much it's going to cost this certain plant if we run a plant's capacity at 50%. We figured out when we plugged in 50 into that exact function, we came up with something undefined. But we, of course, know that there has to be an answer to it. So we estimated the answer by plugging in numbers very close to 50 on both sides. And since they gave us the exact same value from both directions, we figured out the cost of this plant is going to run us $5,200. Now we want to figure out how to do this the exact way without estimating the answers by using a table such as this here. So the way we do that is by using limits. So let me give you, okay, the notation, the way we say it, and the actual definition of a limit here. Okay, so this notation here is actually taking the limit. But remember I said limits and functions most of the time are exactly the same. So this is almost like saying f of a. I take my x value and I substitute a in for that, and that's almost equivalent to f of a. When there's no problems occurring, f of a, my function evaluated at a, is the same as this limit here. Okay, but we want to know what happens when problems do come about, just like in my real life example. And that's when we have to do this here. So this is the way it's written. The way it said is the limit of f of x as x approaches a is equivalent to l. And you can actually rearrange the order of that. So the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to l, or something along those sorts. What this actually means is as x gets closer and closer to a, just like we did in our table, we come up with values closer and closer to 50, then what does our function get closer to? Then our function got closer and closer to that 52 value. So our cost was $5,200, or in this case, it's closer and closer to L. So the difference between functions and limits is the function wants to know what's happening at that exact point. The limit wants to know what's happening close or what's happening near that particular point. So again, the function is at the point itself. The limit is what's happening as we get closer and closer to that point. So that's the difference between functions and limits. Now, something else to keep in mind is that the limit from the left-hand side needs to be equivalent from the limit from the right-hand side. Otherwise, your limit does not exist kind of like saying the function is not defined, and therefore we do not have an answer. So again, let me try and explain the difference between functions and limits by using this table here. The function wants to know what's happening at 50 and that we could not come up with. The limit wants to know what's happening as we get closer and closer to 50 from the left-hand side and from the right-hand side. And if it matches the left and the right, then that there is your answer there. So my function is undefined, but my limit simplifies to be 52. Okay, now that we know what the formal definition of this is, let me try and give you some visuals to go along with it. Most people are visual learners, so let me help by introducing some visuals here. So I have a graph here. This graph is y equals f of x, so my function is f of x. And my limit up here, I want to look as x is approaching a. So I look at my x value approaching a here. What that means limits the definition as x gets closer and closer to a. So as I get closer to a from my left-hand side and as I get closer to a from my right-hand side, what is in fact happening on this graph? So I compare A to where it is on my graph, and again, these arrows here are to tell you we look at it as we get closer and closer and closer to that point from both sides at the same time. 
Now we can pair that up with our y value or our f of x value because y is equal to f of x. So if we partner this up with our y value, we notice we land here at L. So going back to our definition of a limit, as x gets closer and closer to A, if our f of x or our y value gets closer and closer to L, then our limit here is equivalent to L. So in this case, there is nothing tricky happening here. So this is the exact same thing as saying my function evaluated at A is equivalent to L. There's nothing tricky here. So my functions and my limits are going to be the exact same thing. But let me emphasize the definition of limits again and again. So what we want to do here is we basically ignore everything else on the rest of the graph and we want to focus on what's happening to our x value here as we get closer and closer to A. So I have zoomed in on my x value of my yellow graph here, and I want to see what's happening as my y value over there. And again, I can zoom in a little bit farther, and again, I can zoom in a little bit farther. So I see only a little yellow portion of my graph left. In fact, there is a point there, whether it's specified or not. And that point comes up to here to be my y value of L. So you keep zooming in at, as x gets closer and closer to A, and hopefully your y value or your f of x value gets closer and closer to L in this example. So back to this here, I told you there's nothing tricky on this graph, so this is the exact same thing as the function at that point. So as I said before, there's nothing tricky happening in this example here. This is the exact same thing as my function. In fact, I have a point right here at A on my x value and L on my right value. Now, there's nothing saying that I have a specific point there, but we, of course, know that there is a point there. I'm just telling you that on your homework, if there's not actually a point drawn, doesn't mean there isn't one there. It just means it's not as emphasized in other instances. Now, another way that this can be drawn is with an actual point there. And in this case, my limit still ends up being the same thing of my L value. Because again, if I zoom in closer and closer from that direction, I still get closer and closer to this L value here. Let me see other instances where my limit is exactly the same, but my function is a little bit different. So let's move on to another visual here. Now this is a different thing here because I do not actually have a point here. I have a hole in the graph. And we learned in the graphing rational equations videos what creates a hole in the graph. So we can get these from rational equations, or we can actually get these from piecewise functions, holes in the graph. Now, if I wanted to figure out what my function is here, my function is actually not defined. So if I wanted to figure out f of a, that would actually be undefined, which is why we need the difference between functions and limits in the first place. My function is undefined. But my limit still actually ends up being the exact same value. Because if I zoomed in closer and closer and closer to this A value, my graph still approaches this hole in the graph right here and right there. So my answer would still be L as my limit. So again, emphasizing the difference between functions and limits. Function is where that exact point is. Limits is where your graph is getting closer and closer to, no matter what is actually happening at that specific instance. So we saw an example of a point in the graph. We saw an example of a hole in the graph. Let me show you one more example. This example has a hole in the graph, but it also has a point defined someplace else. Again, the function, so if I wanted f of a, that is to be where this point is defined. So if I gave it a y value such as m, my f of a is to be defined at m. So functions are where that exact point is. Limits are where your graph is headed. So this point has no impact on what my limit is. 
Because if I trace my graph closer and closer and closer to this A value here, my yellow graph gets closer and closer to this value here. So my limit of this value is L. So one more time, limits are what your graph is getting closer and closer to, and functions are where that actual point is defined at. So what we're going to do with that knowledge here is we're going to try and apply it, and we're going to try and find all of these limits here on the left, given this graph here on the right. I'm going to end this video here because of time. But in the next video, I'm going to be working through these answers. So I suggest in between these videos, you try and come up with these answers here. Now, you might not have any idea of where to start because this is a really new concept, but I really strongly suggest you try and work this on your own. So when I explain it in the next step, you can kind of understand where your thought process is going wrong or hopefully where you have everything correct.